Howdy. Hi, guys. Hi. All right. So we're going to talk to you about the P5 <laughs> Access Project. Um, I'm Claire. And I'm Matura. Uh, so the P5 Access Project is an ongoing community-based uh, effort to make P5 accessible to people that are blind and have low vision. And before we get into the project, I've got to give a shout out to the NYU Ability Project, which is where I work. Uh, and it's a collaborative effort between NYU's ITP, IDM, and occupational therapy programs. And uh, the sort of spirit of all the work that we do, we uh, develop uh, assistive and rehab technologies and also work on accessibility solutions for people with disabilities. Uh, and the spirit that kind of like runs through all the work that we do is that technology serves people best when they participate in its design. We have a very sort of human-centered, participatory approach to the work that we do. Um, so the elephant in the room, I guess, is like, why would you want to make a visually oriented programming language uh, accessible to blind people? It sounds bizarre, but we've talked to a lot of our friends and colleagues over the years, and it seems that blind people have just as much uh, desire to consume and convey visual information as sighted people. And in fact, the project was born out of some work that I was doing with a woman uh, who is blind, and she, for her job every year, has to create a uh, banquet plan. And she didn't have a tool to, to create that information sort of like spatially and share it and save it, um, share it with her sighted colleagues and save it. She had this tool that was basically uh, a tactile drawing tool, which is like a wax-coated uh, sheet that she would score and create these raised drawings with, but that wasn't really good enough. So she and I were working on this uh, touchscreen application uh, that would allow her to drag uh, table shapes across the screen and get sort of tonal feedback about where it was positioned and if it was colliding with other stuff and she could program who was sitting at the tables. But uh, it was supposed to be participatory. So when it came time for her to roll up her sleeves and learn JavaScript, uh, we found that a lot of the tools or a lot of the resources online for learning how to code were not, in fact, accessible to her screen reader technology that she uses, which uh, reads aloud this information on the screen. Uh, so we approached the Processing Foundation, of course, whose mission is inclusivity and accessibility. Um, and they, you know, let me do a fellowship for a year. And it's been this evolving, ongoing thing um, that we've We've done thanks to the help of an advisory committee and a, a community of uh, friends. Uh, the advisory committee, which was, uh, which is comprised of Josh Miele, uh, Sina Baram, and Austin Serafin, all blind since birth, all wicked programmers, uh, let us know about other efforts in this area, where they went wrong, how we can improve on it, and sort of uh, helped us shape the problem and the solution. So we also did uh, six workshops where we had uh, our sort of target audience, which are uh, blind people that were interested in learning how to code and create visualizations, uh, come in. And we taught them primarily web development, but also uh, workshopped and user tested some of the prototypes that we were working on, uh, which sort of conveniently came about around the time that the web editor was starting to be worked on by uh, Cassie. So, Matura is going to talk to you about some of the outputs that we worked on. So, when we decided to start putting the accessibility into the web editor, the main issue was that P5 depends a lot on the canvas, and the canvas is a very highly inaccessible element in HTML. So, we sort of had to make this library that took the what you see visually and then make it more accessible. So, the three solutions we came up with, the first one was a plain text description of what you would actually draw. So it has like basic description of the element. I don't know if you can see it on the image over there, but it tells you it's a red ellipse, which is on the left side of the canvas or something like that. And then if you inspect it more, you get more details like the coordinates and things like that. The second one, which the third one here, but is a table description, which you can imagine as if there's an Excel sheet behind your canvas, and whatever is present on your canvas is described in the table behind, so you can navigate easily. And the third one is a tonal system, and I'm just, it's super soft, but if you can hear it, there's like a poop, 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 poop. Um, and what that is, is it's describing the motion of the elements on the canvas. So vertical motion is described by a change in frequency, and horizontal motion uh, by a, ch a change in panning. And these were solutions that came up through the research and testing that Claire was talking about. 
Yeah, we also worked on a uh, high contrast mode for the web editor, which is WCAG compliant. We uh, looked at the website and started remediating some of the accessibility issues so people could have access to the references and, and tutorials. And we also came up with a color naming API that would uh, take RGB values and generate descriptions of the colors they produce. And next steps, uh, we need your help. Uh, we, as everybody, we're sort of like working on this very part time, and we want to continue doing uh, community testing, and we want to develop a curriculum. Uh, our hope is by next summer to be teaching uh, some of this stuff to blind teenagers, and uh, the development work also needs a lot. Yeah, so our next step in terms of development is to make this accessibility library standalone so that you can use it outside of the web editors, which means people can write code wherever they want and their outputs are still going to be accessible. And this also means that the widget that was made by Atul Verma will be accessible, which is going to help in our curriculum development. Um, also, thank you so much to Cassie, who's been if, like, In case you miss the giant yeah, hearts. <laughs> the hearts, and Luis, who's uh, currently in Shanghai, he's been uh, contributing uh, very recently to this project, but we need your help, so if you are interested or know anyone that might be interested, please reach out to us. Thank you. <laughs>